Okay, well, we're going to create a show, uh, demonstrate how to use a, a simple macro in Excel to copy some data. So I'm going to open up a worksheet that has basically three records of data here, and the data for each each record patients in this case is on several lines and we want to convert this to a single row of data for each one of these patients. So the first thing to look at is being able to run macros. You'll notice that in my ribbon here, my command ribbon, I have a developer tab. If you don't have that to get the uh, and that's where the macro commands are to get to the developer tab if it's not showing there go to file options customize ribbon and over on the right hand side check developer that'll cause the developer tab to show up on the command ribbon and further uh, to be able to use macros on your on your worksheet, uh, go to Trust Center. Um, Trust Center settings, macro settings, and here's what determines the, these settings determine whether you can run macros uh, you can try out how these different ones work I'm just going to click enable all macros and they give a warning not recommended potentially dangerous code can run uh, because if you somehow happen to get a hold of a macro that has uh, malicious code in it, that, that's a problem. But I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I'm creating my own macro, so I'm going to say OK on that. So now we can run macros. We have the developer tab here that has the macro commands on it. I'm going to click Enable Content. I've already created this data, uh, obviously, uh, whoever is using uh, this macro is going to have their own data, their own format, but this, this is just a demonstration. Okay, so to create the macro, what we're going to do is, first of all, click on Use Relative References. That's important. And then we just start. Click, uh, click on, we're going to click I've got an index for each record, so I'm going to click on index just to register the position that we're going to start at here. We've clicked Use Relative References. We'll now click Record Macro, and it's giving a macro name. You can name that whatever you want. It's a good idea to put something in the shortcut key here, Control Plus. I'm going to say uh, P. So we can run this macro by clicking Control P. You can write in some description here if you want. Store the macro for this workbook is what I'm going to select. The other possibilities are uh, some new workbook or whatever. All right. So anyway, whoop. Okay. So. Sorry, record macro P, store it in this workbook, click OK. Once I click OK, we're in recording mode. So I, it's registered to that position there. I'm going to say, OK, I want to select this data here, copy it, and I'm just going to create uh, the row right next to the existing record. So I'm going to start there, paste that, then this data, copy that, start there, paste that, 
and then this data copy paste hit escape to undo the copy and stop recording we now have a macro so if I click on if I register here click on there click control P it repeated that operation for this record of data this is Jonesy Jones that's this guy's name or actually this lady's name click here control P does the same thing so that's just a simple demonstration uh, of taking multiple copying data from multiple locations and creating one row with it uh, obviously you could create this row in different places uh, like on a different worksheet or below this data but that gets a little more complicated because then you have to specify the position that that goes to whereas what I've done here is just made the position relative to where we originally registered for that record uh, gets a little more complicated when you want to specify like a location for this for a row on a different worksheet to place that data so anyway there's your simple example of we have a macro now available to uh, operate on this data